After recruiting their army with help from the magical tablet, the brothers started to train the soldiers. Some soldiers fled because of how tough the training was. The brothers observed the loss of the soldiers and wanted to know how many soldiers remained without counting them one by one. Zhang Fei proposed to adopt a similar method to one used by the famous military scientist Han Xin. They arranged the soldiers in five lines of equal length and two soldiers were left out. They then arranged the soldiers in seven lines of equal length and two soldiers were left out. They further arranged the soldiers in 12 lines of equal length and one soldier was left out. But later, Zhang Fei could not work out the number of soldiers using these three arrangements. So Liu Bei took out the magical tablet to see whether it could help. Preparing the army to take on the Yellow Turban rebels is uh, hard work and uh, not all of their soldiers are up for it. So some of them are running away. So our heroes would like to know how many they have left. So they line them up in a column of five, rows of five, and they have two left over. And they line them up in rows of seven, and they also have two left over. And they row them up in lines of 12, and they have one left over. So how many soldiers do they have? Well, we can do some maths and we'll show you how to do it later on, but why do maths when you can just have it answered for you directly? Let's build a mini model to do it. So we can see that we have an army. Now, how many people do we have in our army? Well, in fact, this is very loose, between 100 and 800. Well, given we originally had something like 496, it's not going to be 800, but it's somewhere in that, in that range. We don't think we lost uh, too many of our soldiers. And then the constraints saying, well, our army mod five was two. We had two left over if we lined them up in lines of five. And our army mod seven was also two, because we had two left over if we lined them up in lines of seven. And our army mod 12 was one. And then we've said this solve satisfies. So here we're not trying to optimize anything. We're just trying to find a solution. So is there a solution to this problem? So this is a different kind of uh, discrete optimization problem. It's not really a discrete optimization problem, it's a discrete satisfaction problem. Just trying to find a solution to these kind of constraints with this decision variable. So there's no output constraint, no output uh, in this model either, and we'll make use of that as well, show you what happens when we have no output in our model. So we can run our mini-zinc model as follows. We can just type mini-zinc count.mzn and we get this result. So we find the army is 457 and we have our line of 10 dashes indicating that we found a solution. And note we don't have a line of 10 equals indicating there might be other solutions, right? So there might be 457 soldiers left or there might be something else. So we don't actually know. Um, so we might, we'd rather run this. We're going to run mini with all solutions on. So we're asking it to print out all the possible solutions there are to this problem. Because what if there's another solution which is 453 or 452? Then we wouldn't be sure how many soldiers we had. Now if we run, we get that the army is 457. That is a solution and there's no other solutions. Right, so this line here indicates there's no more solutions, so we know, the three heroes know, that there must be exactly 457 soldiers left in their army. So the all solutions can also be set in the configurations tab in the integrated development environment. So for optimization problems, it's the default. For satisfaction problems, like the one we're running here, it's not the default, because typically for satisfaction problems, you only want one solution. You don't want to see all solutions. But here, we want to make sure that there weren't any other solutions. So if we look in the IDE, and you go to the Configurations tab, and you run down, so here's default behavior. That's normally how you'd run it. You can set user-defined behavior and ask for all solutions, and then you can get the same behavior out of the IDE. So note that we didn't have an output statement, and we still got some output. So what happens is, if you don't declare an output statement, then MiniZinc will output all the declared variables in your model, which are not assigned to an expression in your model. So here we only had one variable, and so that was output. And this is a very useful feature for simple models. If you're building simple models, you don't need to worry about output. You'll get a very useful output out of MiniZinc just by having no output item 
But for later models, you just you'll be interested in uh, building specific output functions to write out the bits of the decisions that you're interested in, or writing out the decisions in a way that's understandable to you. So we could have done this without using MiniZinc because uh, there's a Chinese remainder theorem which is about solving simultaneous congruences, and we could write down here's all the algebra for doing this. So we can we know that our army is equal to five times t plus two, where t is some integer, because it was remember rows of five plus two left over. So that's saying it was two mod five. Similarly, our army was equal to seven times u some integer u plus two because it was equal to two mod seven, and it was equal to twelve v plus one as well because it was equal to one mod twelve. And then we have to do some substitution. So if we substitute uh, a into b, we're going to get that 5 plus t plus 2 equals 2 mod 7. And then we have to do a bit of uh, multiplication. We subtract over here, we're going to get that 5t equals 0 mod 7. And then if we multiply both sides by the number, the inverse of 5, we're going to get that t is 0 mod 7. In other words, that t is 7w. So now we can substitute that back into D. So we can use D to substitute back into A, and we know that the army is to 2 plus 35W for some number W. Now we can use that to substitute into C, and we're going to get 2 plus 35W is 1 mod 12. With a bit more simplification, we'll find that W is 1 mod 12, and then we can substitute that back and we'll end up with this thing that army is 37 bus 420x. And you can see basically the only solution to this in the range that we're interested in is that the army is 457. So in summary here we've seen a satisfaction problem, so sometimes we're interested in just finding a solution, not necessarily finding the best solution for a particular objective. And we've also seen that constraints don't just need to be linear equalities and inequalities. So here we've used modulo, and we've used disequality, we could also use multiplication, division, and we'll see many more complex constraints later on. And one of the powers of a, a modern modeling language is to be able to write down very complex, highly nonlinear constraints and have our solvers solve them.